Good evening, this is Dr. Wyatt, and this is our first lecture on section 1.1 of your textbook that introduces what is a function. Before we start with what is a function, we're going to talk about um, uh, what is a relation. A relation is mathematically a set of ordered pairs. And so, if I have a relation, 2, 3, 3, 4, 6, 1, 8, 2, that's a relation. You can write relations in lots of ways. You can write them as equations. So any x, y that fulfills this equation is a relation. You can um, uh, represent them as a graph. So any x, y on this graph is a relation. You can uh, represent them in a table. Here's your x's, here's your y's. And you can also represent them on a, some sort of mapping. So this would be the re relation. This would represent one, two, one, three, two, three, and three, two. A function is a relation Again, a set of ordered pairs. That for every x, there is assigned exactly one y. Okay. So let's talk about what that really means. Okay. A function. I tell people to think of a function as x being people and the y being places. Okay. So you can have three people. You can have, you know, Sally. Jeremy, Franklin, and you can have different places, the movies, the grocery store, and the school. And you can have two people going to the movies at once, and that's okay. But what you can't have is someone going to school and the grocery store at the same time. When this happens, when you have an X going to more than one Y, then it's no longer a function. So if you have one, two, two, three, four, six, great. That's a function. So that's great. But if you have one, two, two, three, one, six, that's not okay. Because here, one is trying to map to two, and it's trying to map to six at the same time. Okay? So this is not a function. This x's we call our uh, independent variables. And the set of x's are often known as the domain. And our y's are our dependent variables. And 
and that is known as the range. If something is on a graph and it's a function, then it will pass what is known as the vertical line test. That means no matter where I draw a vertical line, I will at most touch one point. Okay. It's possible to have a function that I don't touch any points. Let's take a look at the function y equals one over x. At most, I only touch one point, passing the vertical line test. But there is this vertical line right here at zero where I don't touch any points. And that just means that zero is not in the domain, but it is still a function. Examples of equations that are not functions are like x squared plus y squared equals four. That looks like a circle on the graph with the radius of two. And you'll notice here, I am touching more than one point. So this is not a function. There are several examples in um, your text about functions, like the number of uh, uh, the month, so the number of the month, so m equals the number of the month and the year, meaning one is January, two is February. output of the function is the number of days in that month. So January always has 31 days. February has 28 and so on and so on. Assuming that's not a leap year. If you don't, if you define it as any year, we have to define it as not a leap year. If we define it as any year, this is no longer a function. Right. Because then February goes to 28 or 29, and that's not okay. So we can have tables, we can have graphs as functions. Okay. We pass a vertical line test. We have a subset of functions. So if you think um, there's a subset of functions called one-to-one -one functions. These functions pass the vertical line test because they're functions. They also pass the horizontal line test. That means if I go back up to these other ones, circle's not a function, but it's also not one-to-one, -one, as you can see, because it doesn't pass horizontal line test. These two were both functions. This one, is not one-to-one, -one, because there's several horizontal lines that have more than one uh, x. This one is one-to-one. -one. There's no way I can touch any um, 
one and have more than one value. Right, so uh, this is a one-to-one -one function. And what that means in terms of word is you have a function, so there's only one y for every x. There's also, for a one-to-one -one function, there is only one y, or sorry, x, for every y. So in a regular function, you can have something like this, where two numbers are mapped to the same number. But in a one-to-one -one function, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So we want to give these uh, four, so again, like just to summarize, set of ordered pairs are called relations. A subset of that are functions. And a subset of that are one-to-one -one functions. Okay, we want to find a way like to talk about functions. And remember like in Algebra 1, a long time ago for some, maybe last year for others, y equals mx plus b was just a line on the graph. Crossed a b, had a slope of m, and went something like this. Okay. You'll notice this is a one-to-one -one function passes the vertical line test, and it passes the horizontal line test. Right. Right. Now, what if I had another line or another thing uh, that I wanted to graph as well? Maybe I had a function called y equals, let's just say x squared. Right. So that one looks like this. You'll notice that's also a function. It's not one to one. It does. It passes the vertical line test, but it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. Right now, I have y equals this and y equals that, and it's a little confusing because, like, these are not the same no letter numbers, right? They're the same letter, but they're we're not assuming they're the same y. And that can get really confusing. So what mathematicians did is they came up with a naming s scheme. They said we'll call this function you know, f of x. And if we want to refer to another function, we'll give it another name, g of x. And if we wanted to come up with another function, we could give it another name. Um, you know, we could call it h of x. For that month function, we could call it m of d, right? or actually, it makes more sense to call it d of m. M is the month and D is the number of days that comes out of that month. So we could have a function called cars of some, yeah, cars and um, of X. Maybe we want to measure the amount of gas for a particular, that is used for a particular year of car. So we could say gas per model. So gas, so I'd put the year in for a particular model and the, the gas mileage would come out, that type of thing. So we start naming these functions things. You know, most common, we use the letters F, G, H, P, and Q to name functions, but they could be literally named anything. Let me define a function for you. f of x equals 4x plus 3. Now, on, in, a, in the Cartesian plane, we would call this y equals 4x plus 3. 
And if I said, what, what is y when x is 2, then I would put in 2 there, and I'd get y equals 4 times 2 plus 3, which is 8 plus 3, which is 11. So y equals 11 when x is 2. Right? So here, in this notation, I would write this. When I put 2 in, I get out 11. This represents the ordered pair 2, 11. And that's lovely. It's a great notation because if I put 3 in, I get out 15. If I put 0 in, I get out 3. If I put negative 1 in, I get out negative 1. This represents all of these different points on this line. I could ask myself some other math, like when, what x do I need to get 0 out? I could ask that question. And I would go, well, 4x plus 3 equals 0 when x is equal to negative 3 fourths. So this, so if I'm asking this question, I can say f of negative 3 fourths equals 0. Let's do one more example before we move on. What if I have h of p equals p squared plus 2p? Okay. So then I said, what's h of 0? That's 0. What's h of 4? That's 4 squared plus 2 times 4, which is 16 plus 8, or 24. What's h of negative 2? Be careful here. If you plug this into your calculator without putting parentheses around the negative 2, you will get the wrong answer. This is 4 minus 4 equals 0. Again, it is very common for people to plug this into their calculator and go negative 2 caret squared plus 2 times negative 2, and they end up getting negative 8 in their calculator because they took the squared only the 2 and they put a negative there. So and just make sure when you're plugging this in, you're using the right order of operations. If this is wrong. You want to use the right order of operations to make sure you're squaring the whole negative when you put it in. All right, so what is h of uh, 3? It would be 3 squared plus 2 times 3, which is 9, plus 6, or 15. What's h of x? Wherever I see a p, I'm going to put an x, so it would be x squared plus 2x. What's h of y? That would be y squared plus 2y. What's h of x plus y? That would be x plus y squared plus 2 times x plus y. I could simplify this, and I think I will, just to show you a little refresher how you foil out binomials. This is x plus y times x plus y plus 2x plus 2y. So this would be foiling it out first, inner, outer, last, We would have x squared plus 2xy plus y squared plus 2x plus 2y. Please note this. Right? There are no like terms here. This is simplest form. You cannot gather any of these terms. Right? So the whole idea with functions is whatever you put in, if I put triangle in, then you take triangle squared plus 2 times triangle. Right? Whatever goes in here comes out as whatever was in here squared plus 2 times whatever. 
That is the formula for, for the function of h. Just want to go a quick review. That's the last thing of some of our common, um, common like base family functions. Right? You have the constant function. That's f of x equals some constant c, and that is a horizontal line on a graph. You have the you know basic line function, which is often called the identity function. And that's a 45 degree line on a graph. You have the basic quadratic function. That's a parabola, looks like this. You have the basic cubic function. That looks like that. You have the reciprocal function, which we've already talked about a little bit, looks like this. You have uh, the reciprocal squared function. Looks like this. You have the square root function. That's kind of like a Nike swoosh upside down. And you have the cube root function. Which looks like that. And finally, you have the absolute value function, which looks like this. And the more attuned you are to um, um, what these functions look like and kind of what their functions so, like are, like what, what the graph, how that graph matches the equation, a lot of this is gonna come a little bit like easier for you. Um, there is also the half circle function. Remember the circle is not a function, but the half circle uh, looks like something, you know, like this. Um, so something like that could, could give you like, just like the basic half circle with a radius of one. That is a function. It's not one-to-one, -one, but it is a function. All right, so, um, and they put it in here, so uh, in, in this book, so not a function, but kind of an equation relation that you want to be familiar with is the equation for a circle. If you have a center at HK, if the circle centers, and has a radius of R, then your equation is going to be X minus H, Y minus K, equals R squared. Okay, so that kind of runs you through section 1.1. 1. 1. Um, please read through it. It will help. Take good notes. Um, and then go ahead and try the homework um, for section 1.1. 1. 1. Um, uh, thanks. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to catch me on the Zoom office hours. Or uh, put it up in the discussion board.